channel, it's Cass. Today we're going to be doing a nursing related video, but before we get started, if this is your first time here, please tip me, tap the bell, give me a thumbs up, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and also turn your notification bell on so that way you're able to get updated when I drop a video. Y'all know the routine. Okay guys, so this video is specific to Cerner. I do have a Cerner specific assessment sheet. I just wanna show you guys how I use this piece of paper to make my shift go a lot smoother. It helps keep me extremely organized, which I love. And it's very easy for me personally to transition into each job that I've been doing. Um, I originally made this bottom half for Epic. As you know, if you haven't seen that video, I will link it somewhere. Um, and I just had to add an upper section for Cerner. So we're gonna get started. I'm gonna switch over my screen so you guys can see. Okay, so this is the sheet, guys. She is stunning, she's crisp. I already feel, wow, you know, because I'm, I have such a type A personality, it just, I, because it looks crisp and ready to go, I'm prepared for all the things, you know what I mean? So the top half is for all patient information and the bottom half is for my meds and also helps me stay on top of all of my charting that I need to do. So it's super, super helpful to just have it like this. So we're gonna start from the top. I used to go through and write everyone's name, write their age, write their admit date, write their diagnosis, their diet. But then I started getting, especially at my last job, my last job, a lot of the times when you called the doctor or you called anybody, the first thing they did was like, ask for the MRI and ask for this. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like now I'm like running to a computer to try to double click and it's taking forever. It's so embarrassing. Like I'm on the phone with the doctor and they're like, oh, you know, like what's the MRI so I can open the chart. And I'm like, oh, now I'm frazzled. Mm -mm. And those days are over because now what you need to be doing is getting that patient label, baby. It has a barcode, the patient's name, it has their date of birth, it has the day that they got admitted, it has their primary care doctor, what else is on there? And it also has their MRN number and their FIN number. The FIN number is kind of my fave. I don't really use the MRN much um, just because I like at my last assignment that I was trained on the FIN. But the FIN and the MRN are essentially the same thing. Uh, I really, really love using either number for when I'm getting a new admission. Like as long as I have the FIN or the MRN, you can add your patient onto your list. Um, that way you can like look at their chart, but also already have them on your patient list in your brain. I always add the patient labels and I wait till after report when everything's calmed down and then I just go and I grab them. So that's where the, the label will go. Now they are kind of big so I kind of start from like three at the very top and kind of just stack them on top of each other. Like I said, super, super helpful because patient's name, date of birth, admission date, super important. Uh, you know, like it's so hard to find the admission date sometimes on Cerner and sometimes you have to go back into the notes, especially if they're like a transferred patient. Like I'll have a patient, I'm like, oh, they only been on the floor for four days. And then you go and you find out that they've been there for like a month and some change, but they've just been getting transferred to each floor. And of course, after you transfer to each unit, it's like a new admission or like it's a transfer, but you know, it kind of just starts a new time for you. So I love that the patient label gives you the very first day that they actually came in because that's the one that's important because you want to know the length of stay. You know what I mean? Because it's just like, okay, so what are we doing to get this patient home or to their facility? So now that I have the label, I don't have to worry about the room name. Well, you can do the room, of course. So uh, the room, but I actually write it on the label because I take the space up of the room to also use for the label. So because sometimes the labels be big, y'all. So I use those two sections to put my label. I skip the age, skip the admit date. Um, and I kind of just leave those columns open for any random like notes that I want to put in for my patient. You know what I mean? Like maybe if they have a, um, a Foley or something, you can like just extra spaces. Their admitting diagnosis. I like to put that there as well. And then their diet, of course, especially if they're going to be NPO at midnight. Their attending, super important, especially the facility that I'm at now. They like to do the attending and then they actually give you the last four digits of the extension for the doctor if you have to call or page them. So, I mean, but that's also something that you could definitely just go into the chart and look at. It's not really like a priority for me to get. Like if somebody doesn't give me that in report, unless it's a specific surgeon that we have to call because this surgeon specifically or this doctor specifically wants to get updates, those type of things are in the chart. You know what I mean? So I'm not really pressed about that unless in report they're like, hey, this doctor wants you to call them at eight o'clock after you've get like hung this med or after you've done this with the patients, like you can like update them. And I'm like, cool, I'll write that number down. But besides that, it's in the chart. And don't let nobody bully you into telling them all that stuff. I've noticed in California, because they don't do report with the sheets and like hand sheets off, like they don't have report sheets at all. You have to have your own 
or you're just writing on a piece of plain paper and that's so overwhelming but a lot of the nurses are expecting you to basically tell them the entire chart and it's like that's not what report is supposed to be you get what i mean like as far is very specific it gives you an overall picture of the patient but when you want to get into in-depth details that's your job as the nurse to go into the computer and look at your patient because i could be telling you anything you get what i'm saying like not saying that I don't work with people that are trustworthy or that I'm not trustworthy, but my experience or how I look at the patient could be different than what you see it as. And so I feel like a lot of people don't want to go into the chart and that's just not appropriate. Like you got to go into the chart. You got to read an H and P, you got to read a note. I like to read update notes by the doctors. Like you have to read these things. And that's, it's so much information that there's no way I can tell you all of that in a report, but some people really expect you to. And I don't be going for that. You know what I'm saying? Because it's just like, you can look at the chart. <laughs> so code status, also very important. So I definitely feel like code status is something you always, always want to have in your eye line. And I wish it's something they put on the label because it is one of those things that sometimes the code status won't be in the computer. And it's something you have to like look for because sometimes it just doesn't like communicate with the charting properly. Something goes off of the communication and you can't find it. You know what I mean? So it's something you always want to clarify. Make sure the paperwork is on the chart. Y'all know the deal. Allergies, super important. If they have any, I just write them down in red. If they don't have any, I just put NKA, call it a day. Not that right. IV sites, super important, especially if it's a central line. I always want to know, do they have a pick? Do they have a midline? Do they have IV access at all? And then of course, if they have telly, which in the South, you know, we keep telly on every floor. Out here in California, telly is reserved for like step down and ICU units. So we don't have telemetry on our floor, which is kind of concerning to me because I'm so used to nursing a certain way. So like sometimes you'll have a patient whose potassium is too low or too high, but it's like if they're on a potassium placement replacement protocol, why are they not on cardiac monitoring? I don't know. It's just strange that they just do things so different in different states. So telly here in california is legitimate like your icu nurse basically and in the south you can have telly on any floor whether it's just a transitional care unit or a surgical floor a medical floor whatever like you in the er you got a telly box you know what i'm saying but they don't do that out here back to the bottom part of the paper guys this is my favorite part of the paper okay after i write down my room numbers i say hello to everybody hey hey i'm here i run into a computer for flatting it because i need to get some information the first thing that I do is I go through, of course, I add everybody to my patient list and I go through and I write down all of their meds. I do this because through their meds, you can honestly get a good history very quickly. You get what I'm saying? So like, for example, say at 2100, they have insulin due. I know that they're a diabetic and depending on how the insulin is scheduled, I know how their sugar checks are so if they just have like a 10 o'clock insulin they kind of do insulin laid out here but if they have like a 10 o'clock insulin and then they don't have one like at six in the morning then they're achs if they have insulin at midnight and then at six in the morning or like because it's normally going around 11 so you know you have that hour before hour after so that's why i said 10 but so if they have the 11 o'clock and a 6 a.m insulin due that means they're a q6 check so that already has me writing down like okay because I know that they have their insulin due at this time, this is what I know that they are. And so I just go ahead and I put ACHS because they have break nurses out here sometimes when they're not low staffed that uh, will come around and ask you like, hey, who are your blood sugar checks so I can check them for you tonight? It makes me more frazzled than someone coming up to me and asking me a question I don't know the answer. So I'm like, oh, let me get in the chart. Again, the same thing with like the MRN. Like you call pharmacy to ask them a question. And they're like, what's the patient's FIN number so I can open the chart? And I'm like, uh, mm -mm. So I like to just have that already written down so when they come around, I can be like, this patient and this patient. So that really helps. So then from there, of course, you know, if I see that they have semitoprolol, I know that they have um, AFib or some type of cardiac issue. So I'm already in the back of my mind. I'm like, let me go look at their vitals. Let me see what their heart rate has been looking like. I like to see how people trend over, you know, one to two days. So that way I can say like, hey, they got it this time or like sometimes their heart rate is starting to be really low. So it kind of just gauges and helps you decide, is this a medication that I'm going to give tonight? Is this something that I should go ahead and call the doctor about? Like their heart rate is 
overly like their heart rate has been really really low maybe they need to adjust the dose of metoprolol we don't know but these are things that are, i'm already thinking about just from writing down the meds you get what i'm saying even with the insulin i see their achs do i need to pull out coverage i'm already thinking okay am i gonna have to pull that out from the med machine so i go back and i look at how much they've been trend how they've been trending over the last couple of days i also like to go and see if they're on the high um the high the high um, sliding scale or the low sliding scale because there's different ones um, just so I can see how much insulin they have been getting over the last couple of days if they've been getting it every single time like these are the things you should be thinking about even from just writing the meds I haven't even written down a name yet because again I don't have my labels right so I don't know who this person is but I'm already learning so much just from their meds then I see Tylenol a lot of times they'll schedule Tylenol for patients so if they have Tylenol, I'm already going in and I'm going into their PRN list to see if they have Oxy, if they have Dilaudid, if they have Morphine. Because a lot of the times if I see Tylenol, that means that you're probably a surgery patient where you've had some type of surgery. So they want to make sure that your pain level is staying on top of it. So with that, I also want to see has is the Tylenol enough? Should I be bringing you something else with the Tylenol? Because again, like a narcotic with the Tylenol, sometimes that really helps to knock down the pain. I also, when I do my first initial assessment, love to ask my patient, like, how is your pain? How have you been faring on just the Tylenol? Or have you been doing the Oxy? Do you want me to alternate it? I like to ask people what their plan is. And if they don't have a plan, I tell them the different options. We could alternate it or we could give them to you together. But as you know, the Tylenol is Q6 and your pain pill is Q4. So like, you know, trying to just keep them on a, I like to let people know what the night could look like because do you want me to disturb you and wake you up? Or is the Oxy-5 just enough? Or do you need the 10? Like, I like to get these things out of the way because this is how you stay on top of your time management when you're thinking like this you get what i'm saying it's the critical thinking and don't beat yourself up if you're not there yet if you're a new nurse because it took me about a year to get here you know what i'm saying like stuff didn't start clicking until three months and then it kept clicking all the way through <laughs> and even till this day some new things click especially with travel because they do things so differently at different facilities sometimes they'll order potassium tablets and that immediately child i'm in the results I need a review immediately because what's your potassium that they got you on potassium pills or even sometimes I've noticed at my last facility they started ordering um, 20 of K and all of the patients fluids and so when I went to go look at their potassium a lot of their levels were really high because they were getting potassium infused continuously and even though it was diluted of course it starts to add up over a couple of days and so their blood their potassium would start becoming elevated and you know that's something to let the doctor know about you always want to give them a call and be like hey like i've noticed that they've been trending up do you want to change the fluids do you want to dc the fluid like, what are we doing because what i'm not gonna have <laughs> is the level getting too high now they have to go to a step down unit to get put on telemetry you get what i'm saying like what can we do to prevent our night from being too much everything is about prevention everything is about thinking how can i help my patient and keep them safe but also stay on top of my schedule and stay on top of things so that everybody gets to see me at a fair amount of time you know what i'm saying and sometimes not every night is like like that and sometimes you'll have patients that are understanding sometimes you won't but i find that if you just communicate with your patients and let them know like hey do you need anything else right now you may not see me in the next hour or two because i have a patient that i'm going to probably be in their room a little bit longer and people are understanding it's just like if i don't know what's going on or if they don't know what's going on then that's where the problem begins you get what i'm saying and that can kind of throw off your night now they're hitting the call light because they didn't understand something and it's like i try to get all of that out of the way educating it while i'm with them in the room <laughs> for real it really helps y'all it really helps that's what i do i write down all the meds from 7 p to 7 a.m and the thing i don't like about cerner is and this is all without opening the chart this is from the brain i wish i could show you guys what i'm talking about but unfortunately i don't have a snippet i'm gonna google scour google and see what i can find but for your cerner brain once you add all of your patients onto your patient list you're able to hit this little side arrow and you guys know which one it is the arrow that shows you your work list and you're able to see all of the meds now for some reason even though i get to work at 1845 and even though i don't get on a computer like even though i'm getting on the computer at 1845 like it's 6 p.m right why are my six o'clock med my 6 a.m meds not crossing over you get what i'm saying so every time i write down my list i write down everything i can see and then i go back later when I'm sitting down, like maybe after 10 o'clock, after I've passed all my meds and I'm doing some charting, 
then I'll go through and I'll relook at the MAR. And I also use that time to go ahead and do all of my pain reassessments. Because through Cerner, you can do their pain reassessments from the MAR, which is so, so helpful because it's just a pop-up screen. You do it, you get it out of the way. So I'll go through, do all of my pain reassessments, and then I'll also take that time to make sure I don't have any 6 or 7 o'clock meds because sometimes they don't cross over. So keep that in mind. So yeah, I really love this section. Once I write all of my meds down, again, I have a picture of the patient. Now I can go and get reports. So because at my facility, they don't exchange report sheets, I actually physically write down every single thing that is important to me, like I was saying before. So I actually just flip over the paper, it's plain on the back. So from here, I actually just draw in a, um, I just draw these lines and they're much more crisp because I actually am able to trace from the front and I use those lines as kind of like a guide. But essentially I just make, a, I just make six boxes on the back this is what I write down before I go get reports. So I take the time to get my room numbers for the front sheet. And then I go ahead and I write down all of the meds for all of the patients that I know that I'm going to have. And then I turn the sheet around and I get that I write down their name. So I'll put the room number. I put the patient's last name, first initial. So we'll just say patient, comma, A. Then I put their age with their, um, I put their age and their gender. So 37 year old and I just put M or I put F. It's just really cool shorthand. Full, that always stands for full code. Regular diet. If they happen to have allergies, I write them with my red. So I have one of those pens that have the four colors. I would recommend them. I have, didn't start using them for real until the last two years, but it really, really helps for things that you need to pop out at your eye, of course. So if they have allergies, I just write them in red. So we'll just put penicillin here. And then I like to put if they're like a surgical patient or not. So let's just say that they're a medicine patient, which means they're hospitalist. And then just an extension, zero, zero, zero. So this is very basic. But it helps you, it really helps me because when I'm like getting reports from a whole bunch of people and they're like, hey, do you have 13? And I'm like, yeah, I do. And then it's like, okay, this is who it is. And then they just start like just running off from the top of their head and reading their report sheet. And it's like, okay, I don't even have the patient's name written down yet. And that holds me back. <laughs> you know what I mean? So like while they're talking and they're telling me all of this stuff, I can just like kind of pause. And then I can get it down to business because now they're telling me more. You get what I'm saying? So when it comes to me, the first thing that I'm going to do, and this is something that I kind of mastered during my first um, assignment, and I used to do this on sticky notes, but I have the diagnosis. I like to just go ahead and put that there. They always tell you, Cerner, this is why I, Cerner doesn't say this is what the patient was admitted for. It tells you what the patient said down in the ER. So like if the patient said, I fell at home and busted my ankle, that's literally what Cerner is going to have in the diagnosis area versus like oh they had a ground level fall and they broke their hip like why can't you just say right hip broke like right hip fracture because that's what they're actually here for like i understand they had a fall but like what did they break they don't tell you any of that which is another reason why i'm like it's so important for you to go through your own notes because a lot of the times the nurses that i get report from in cali will literally just be like yeah they fell at home and i'm like okay so like you just told me all this stuff, but what are they here for, dog? Like, oh yeah, girl, they broke their head. They're not getting surgery for two days. Why did you, like, why did you just say that in the beginning? Like, I've been sitting here waiting, twiddling my thumbs. Very important when you're getting a report from the ER, from the ER, very important. Please, y'all, we're just getting report because you're getting a new patient in general. Always look at your chart before you get report. For some reason, they have this terrible habit down here where they refuse, like, they'll just walk up to you and be like, Oh, someone's on report for you, you're getting a patient. And I'm like, I don't operate like that. Everywhere I've worked, they give you at least, minimal I've ever had is like three minutes where they're like, they just put somebody on the bed where they're slamming us, cool. But three to 10 minutes, I always know when I'm getting a patient. You're supposed to call me on my spectral link. Hey Cass, you're getting a patient from the ER. Hey Cass, you're getting a patient from the PACU. So I could be like, all right girl, when I come out of this patient's room, I'm gonna come up to the desk and come get the FIN number. They do not say any of that. And so I told them, I don't move like that and I'm not getting report if I don't, if I haven't seen the chart. I'm just not, because it's crazy. The other day this happened and they were like, oh, you know, the ER nurse is like upset because they've been waiting for this long. And I'm like, well, that's fine because 
I just found out that this patient just got a bed. They've known for 30 minutes, but the bed, but bed control didn't call y'all until just now. So I'm not ready for a report. I get where I get the fin number. I'm looking through the chart. It's a standard dementia, broken hip patient. I'm not working ortho this time. I'm just working a regular medical floor. And, you know, I assumed like most facilities that the charge nurse had already went through the chart because why would you be accepting a patient on the floor that the charge nurse isn't aware of? Am I right? Because that's how that goes. And that's how I know that I'm getting a patient because my charge nurse has already looked at the chart, checked the vitals to make sure that the patient is not someone who's going to come on our floor and crash. Because then you need to be in ICU. Like, we don't want to delay your care by bringing you up here just to have to transfer you somewhere else. They do not do that out here. And so when I was letting them know, like, hey, can I get a room closer to the nursing station? Because my patient sounds like, you know, it's going to be of a little bit of an intense kind of night for us because they have all of this history like mental health history and then they also have a broken hip like i want them to be closer what oh my gosh like i didn't know the patient was gonna be this difficult if i would have known i would have called so we could have got them sent to the orthopedic unit and i was like well this is why i wanted to look through the chart first and this is why i keep asking you guys to give me the fin number because had i known that you wouldn't want this patient on the floor then i would have told you like hey did you know that this is what's going on for me this is a regular day she's gonna get you know taken care of it's gonna be a little difficult but i know what to do the charge nurse sounded so concerned and i was just like did you not look at the chart before you assigned the patient to me oh mm -mm. and that's the problem right there always 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 look at the chart first because you just don't know what's going on anyways diagnosis they'll tell me the person had a ground level fall and then I go ahead and I also write like, okay, right hip fracture. If they've already had surgery, which nine times out of 10 on the floor that I'm on now, they have, then I just go ahead and I like, will ask them like, what day did they get surgery? So they'll just be like, okay, 822, they got their um, right hip, I am nailing. So I like to know that because then I know how many days post-op they are, which is also important because it's like, if they are, if they just came from surgery, have they gotten up yet? Are they moving? Are they nauseous? Is the anesthesia treating them well? Like what's going on with the patient? If there are a certain amount of days post-op, like anything over two days, you know, I'm worried about a bowel movement because nine times out of 10 with a lot of the hip fractures with the falls, they're older patients that are going to end up going to a skilled nursing facility. A lot of them do not go back home because they have to go to rehab first to make sure that they're actually able to take care of themselves at home by themselves if they don't have help. If not, then they're going to go to a skilled nursing facility and you can't discharge a patient if they haven't had a bowel movement. So if there's a certain amount of days post-op and they haven't had a bowel movement, I'm like, okay, I need to call the doctor to see if they'll give me like some Miralax or something, or, you know, say that the stool, like the colis isn't working for real. So those are things that you should also be thinking about when you think about that. So always want to know like their last BM if they're post-op. Are they working with physical therapy? Has that started yet? Like these are all things you want to know because if this is a patient that should not be getting up without physical therapy i need to know that like that's something i need to know because a lot of the times from the therapy notes you can't really tell if the patient should only be in like only be getting up with physical therapy or if you, it's okay for you and like a tech to take them to the bathroom because sometimes they're sometimes some people's um ambulation post-op is just not steady at all and if you're not steady baby I, we are not hitting this floor again it's impossible you're getting a pure wig you're getting a bedpan and we're turning you q2 but you are not getting up because if you fall and i fall well now we both on the ground looking crazy so these are all things that you should be thinking about with like your post-op patients you want to make sure that their bowels are awake that they're moving those um legs if they're not ambulating, you want to make sure that they're on some type of like Lovenox, heparin, and they have their ice, their SCDs on. From the diagnosis, most people always go to the history, and this is just like a flow of things. So you can write your DX, write HX, and just leave a little space, because some people will like bounce around. So from history, say they have hypertension, say they have AFib. Um, so this is there. They also had their left hip fracture. Okay, we'll say they're also a diabetic because they ACHS. <laughs> so then with their blood sugar, I want to know, like, are they eating? Is that something that I need to be, like, concerned about? Like, do I need to go in and feed the patient? You know, those are the kind of things that you want to ask. And those, that's what it's important because those are the things that you're not going to really see in the chart that often. 
and it's more of like a day-to-day -day and a personal like experience for the patient because some patients I've had they'll be on a regular diet but they'd like to still get their pills crushed so these are things that I want to know because it may not be charted it's just like something that you just pass on to the nurse like hey this person only likes pudding with their crushed meds or they only like applesauce like I need to know those things everything else that's more like definitive I can find in the chart but like I need to know does this patient not want me to disturb them at night do they want their um, blood thinner shots like what medications are they refusing like personal care questions are what I'm looking for in report as well like things that will personally help me take care of the patient in the way that they want to be taken care of because if I know that you're refusing the med I'll double check with the patient like hey I saw that you haven't been getting your heparin shot do you want me to bring it for you tonight because you have one at two in the morning you want me to wake you up like what are, how are we feeling I work with a lot of residents and so a lot of them don't really know a lot of like the times and like just little things that they need help with and so I always ask them like hey can you just reschedule this blood thinner shot to start at a different time so that way the patient is still getting their medication but they're not refusing it because they don't want to get woken up little things like that so then from there so diagnosis history plan of care is also a section that I would highly recommend having and I just kind of just let this one flow. A lot of the times they'll let you know if the patient is alert and oriented times four. They'll let you know if they're on room air. They'll let you know if they're on standard isolation or if they're on, you know, any other like contact or airborne or something like that. They'll let you know that the patient's ambulatory or if they're not. They'll let you know that they have a 20 to the right EC. If they do have any IV status, you want to know where that is. And then the plan is for them to go to a skilled nursing facility. So this is like just a typical breakdown of what a report sheet could look like. And when I'm getting report, these are just things that I'm like looking for. The diagnosis, the history, the plan. Because once I at least have those three things, I can still go in the chart and get everything else and get like a more in-depth picture of what exactly is going on with the patient. Because a lot of the times it is a little bit more or there's more to the plan of care as far as like antibiotics and like stuff like that. So when you're getting report though and you're getting report from multiple people, you're not trying to report shouldn't last more than two to three minutes per patient. It really shouldn't unless the patient is just extremely complex and they've been there for like a certain amount of days. They've had all these different things done, different labs, different tests, different surgical procedures like that's a report where it's like, okay, girl, grab your pencil for real. And let's go through this date by date, which is also something I like to do. It just helps with the report. That's something that you go through the notes for because sometimes you can't keep up with all of that. You get what I'm saying? This is just typically what I look for in a report. And then I actually go through and I sit down and I go through all of the labs. I go through all of the medications. I see how the patient trended across the board, whether it's vital signs, labs, and how they took their meds. I like to see that too. Um, just so I can be on the same page with them and then once I have this information then I go and do my assessment talk to the patient let them know that I'll be back between 8 30 9 o'clock with their meds and do they want me to bring them anything specific do they want something for sleep like that's the perfect time to ask all of those questions so yeah guys that's my little sheet it really by the end of the night this thing looks like who did it and what because I'll just be like scribbling little things all over the place and by the end of the night, it's like, oh, you were working. And I was like, yeah, you know, I was. I truly was. I keep all three sheets for the three days that I work because sometimes I'll end up still having one or two of the same patients when I come back or something like that. And so from there, I actually just fold the paper hot dog style. Y'all know. with the um, So that the patient labels are still at the top and I still have the report on the inside. And sometimes I'll just staple it right over a new sheet so that way I'm aware that I still have the same patients, but I still have all the old information from the day before. So that really, really helps. All right, guys, that is the end of the video. I know it was kind of a long one and I rambled a lot, but I love chit chatting with you guys and I love helping as much as I can. There's so many little things that you can do to just make sure that you're staying on top of your game when it comes to nursing and to just keep you on a, just a level of flow that will make the night go smoothly so that even when it's not running smooth, you're still able to kick it back up and then just keep rolling. Because of course, like you already are at risk of not having a smooth night because your admissions get thrown to you here and there. So with that, that's already something that's going to alter my flow. And so I'm thinking about that. Like if I know I'm number three, four to get an admission, I'm like, I need to wrap all of this up because I know they're about to call my phone soon. You get what I'm saying? Like, you have to stay on top of these things. 
Anyways, I love you guys so much and I hope that you have an awesome day. Bye.